Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make something like this, which is a large animated sprite in a platformer mode in, in GB Studio. As you can see, this sprite has more than three colors. Three colors is the usual uh, sprite color amount that you would have in GB Studio. But by using some techniques in GB Studio 3, I've managed to make it bigger and also more colorful. So to begin, I'm going to talk about the platformer mode itself. So if you click on this scene here, you can see that it's set to the type of platformer. I've also got the parallax background and I've just set these different bits with different speeds so it looks cool. And I've also set here the sprite palettes, which will come in useful. Um, and so for every scene that I'm using my actor, I will need these um, colors because this is the hat color, the skin color, the shirt color, and the jeans color. If you click on the background here, you'll see that the movement speed is set to 1, which has no relevance to platformer mode. Uh, the platformer speed is set in the settings, which I'll show you in a minute, but it does have a, the animation speed does have a meaning. This animation speed here is how fast your animation will play. This is important because depending on how fast your character moves, you need to set your animation speed to match it. So, for example, in Unity, you might have a script that matches the animation speed to the movement speed so that it always looks like it's it's working correctly but in gb studio that isn't a thing you have to set the animation speed um, either here or in the scripts and events so if we look into the settings and we scroll down to platformer then we can see that i've set the jump button to up the run button to a and the interact button to down but i found that this has no meaning at all the jump button is always A, I think, or B. I think it's actually B. And the run button is always A, and so is the interact button. I might be wrong, I might have gotten them a bit switched around, but it's always the same. So when you test, you will find out which ones it is. Um, and you have to make your game around that. You can change it by going into the actual engine scripts in the very back end, but I, I don't know how possible that is either. Um, so I recommend just living with it for now until they actually make it uh, possible. Uh, but in this game, I've made it so there is no running. So to do that, I actually set the run velocity to the same as the walk velocity. And I've also set the walk acceleration to the same as the run acceleration. I've also made the, it's actually quite slow walking and I made the acceleration almost instant or as instant as can be. And the same with the deceleration. And I've made it the jump velocity is zero, so I can't jump as well. Um, Obviously, if you're going to make a jumping game with running, then you obviously want to set these to different things. So definitely make this for your game. Don't just copy anyone else's. You should be testing and seeing what your game needs and what feels good to you. I've also set the default sprite for the player in the platformer to this deconstructed one. And I'm now going to show you what that looks like in the sprites. So if we go down to the deconstructed here, you can see that if I hover over it, there's a lot of, there's actually a lot going on. If I do this, you can see there's, it looks like six, but I think it's more like eight different things um, or 12, depending on um, what you're actually looking at. Uh, as you can see, we've got the hat, which has two, the face, which has two, the body, which has two, and the hands, which have two, and also the legs, that has two. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten uh, tiles in this one frame of animation, uh, which isn't very optimized. Um, but it's the reason why I'm doing this is so it can have colors. See here, I've clicked on the jeans and it has the jeans palette. Uh, if I go to here, it has the shirt palette and uh, skin, which means that's the face palette. Um, and if I move one out the way, then I've got the hat palette here as well. So the reason why everything is separated is so that it can be its own color. So uh, in my game, I'm going to have it so there's Everything that's idle is the same, just looking at the camera. And then there's only moving right. As you know, there's no jumping or falling or climbing. Um, and then, as you can see, I, I started by making this walking um, animation here. And then I've deconstructed it into its pieces so that I can make the frames uh, look like they're moving. Uh, and by obviously, by deconstructing it, I have the separate colors on them. Uh, I've also made it so it's only 16 wide. Uh, and it's 32 tall um, and the collision box I haven't actually messed around with yet uh, but it's just the default 16 by 16. Uh, so to begin I obviously started making the the walking animation and I was testing it and making sure before I wasted time by deconstructing it and adding the colors. 
I definitely recommend you do the same. And to get the animation working smoothly and nicely, I have eight frames and I use this guy's tutorial. As you can see here, he's already deconstructed it for us. So as you can see, the first four frames are with the leg or the right leg in front um, and then moving to the back. And then the next four frames is the left leg starting at the front and then moving to the back. And obviously the arms are also swinging and in the stick figure thing, it's easy to see what is going on. And then obviously I've translated it into my style with my character. So yeah, def I definitely recommend this uh, YouTube tutorial. Uh, just looking at these frames. I, he said in the video that he also has a tutorial with less frame animation. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, and it's, it's never cheating using something like this because um, if somebody's already done the work for you, there's no point of you working out how to do it yourself um, and wasting time. This is already done and you saw how mine looked. It looks very smooth. And, and the fact that it's using eight frames of animation means that it does look very smooth. So moving into what I've actually made here, obviously I used, like I said, 16 by 32 tiles for every single frame so that they all fit onto the thing nicely and don't use too many tiles. I think the final animation uses 50 tiles, um, which is, does include this one here, which isn't very optimized, but I wasn't doing it for optimization. I was doing it to make a smooth, colorful animation. Um, and obviously by deconstructing it, you're also increasing the amount of frames or tiles, sorry, that the animations use. So looking back into the game world, this sprite palette here is very important. If we go into the sprites here, then when we click on something in the player deconstructed, it has the palette five and then what it's called or what it's using in the, in the scene, right? So it says here preview as scene one, which is very important. Um, because if you were to go into another scene and you haven't got these set up correctly, this won't look the same. So you need to make sure that every scene that you want to use the character with the correct colors, you need to have these colors set up as they are here. So you may want to keep that in mind if you have multiple characters in a scene and that they don't all use the same colors, you would have to think about how you might go about uh, making them constructed correctly. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this crash course on colorful large animations in GB Studio. I'll put my patrons up on the screen right now. Thank you very much to you guys. You guys are the best. I am making this animation and this character for um, a reimagination of that tanker game I made quite a while back, the prototype. And I want to make it into a full story game with, um, you know, a character as a player and also top down again, truck movement, like in the open world RPG games of old, um, like I had in the original prototype. And this character will be what you see when you go into the towns and you talk to people. So yeah, I've already recorded this video once. This is the second time I recorded it. My computer didn't uh, didn't like the first recording. So um, I hope this wasn't too rushed or I didn't miss anything out. So please let me know in the comments what you thought. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.